Welcome to Canada Social Changemakers. My name is Justin Douglas, and today we're here with Dr. Isabel Anne Bisson, co-chair of the Executive Committee of the Sierra Club of Canada, Quebec Chapter. She's also an expert in environmental impact and community needs assessment, and the president of Terra Humana Solutions. Thank you for being here as well. Thank you so much, Justin. So for people who are not familiar with the Sierra Club, do you want to just give a little overview of what the organization is and what it does? So uh, Sierra Club, uh, well, if we go back 125 years ago, it's an organization that was started by uh, John Muir, who's a famous ecologist, environmentalist. Thanks to him, we have several parks in the United States, uh, Sequoia National Park, the Grand Canyon, and uh, he was passionate about nature. He really felt that there was a spiritual connection between humans and, uh, and nature and wildlife. Um, so he dedicated his life in protecting as much land as possible. Um, then uh, in, uh, in Canada, it started with the whole environmentalist movement in the 60s in BC, mm -hmm. and then it moved east. And I would say the newest chapter is Sierra Club Quebec. You have Sierra Club Canada Foundation, and then you have different chapters. You have four chapters, and so one of them is Sierra Club Quebec. We are focusing, uh, I would say, primarily on the protection of natural spaces. Um, and uh, we help a lot of grassroots organizations like Sauvons en Salome, uh, Techno Park Oiseau, um, uh, Sauvons la Falaise, uh, and so we uh, help uh, them to protect these uh, different natural spaces across Montreal. Um, so I guess we're a little bit of facilitators, but we are also, our, uh, our mission is to uh, protect our natural heritage for Quebec, for Quebecers. Mm -hmm. And to make sure that, um, you know, generations to come have natural spaces to enjoy. And the other thing too, I should say, is that we are helping the Grand Chief uh, Serge Simon with his uh, Treaty Alliance mm -hmm. uh, to stop pipelines. Um, he's making uh, amazing efforts to uh, have this uh, treaty signed by different nations across Canada. He's gone into the United States as well, and I believe he even has some uh, nations in South America and Central America. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, let's g give us a little bit more background about that for the pipelines and some of the environmental debate of, of what's going on. Well, pipelines, as you know, is a very contentious issue. Uh, the problem is, is that uh, with pipelines is that if there's any uh, leaking, any spill, it's very, um, it, it's hidden. So we don't know what the damage is. And so the issue is that the uh, underground water can get contaminated very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so that is the big issue. Uh, First Nations are very worried about it because they don't want to have their water contaminated. Mm -hmm. A lot of it, uh, as the very, very famous one in the Dakotas, that's uh, uh, something that uh, has been uh, very true to the very close to their heart because they are worried that the water will be contaminated. Uh, what would you say are some of the places where Montreal does well in terms of environmental protection and where do you think are some of the places we really need to look at improving? Well, you know, uh, Montreal is, uh, was uh, I think uh, cited as a very green city, as one of the greenest cities in the world. It's true in some ways. You, you, there's two ways of thinking about this. There's the sort of like the engineering uh, way of thinking about this, where you think about waste management and, mm -hmm. and creating bike paths and all these, and you know, creating city parks and all of these things that are wonderful. Um, but there's also the other aspect of protecting the wildlife that lives mm -hmm. in Montreal. And we're talking about the island of Montreal. Protecting the wildlife of Montreal means you're protecting the natural spaces. And sometimes people don't see those as hand in hand. Being environmentally friendly means you're going to go put your uh, plastic bottle in the recycling bin mm -hmm. instead of the garbage, or uh, you're going to compost instead of throwing your you know, organic waste in the garbage. Right. But it means more than that. So I really think we need to look at this comprehensively. Mm -hmm. uh, being environmentally friendly, being a green city means that you need to look at everything. And I'm, I'm going to give you an example. Please. So there's, uh, we have wonderful laws in Canada. I'm going, to, I'm going to talk about federal laws. We have a law called the Migratory Bird Con uh, Convention Act of the early 90s. And that law protects migratory birds during the breeding season. Interesting. Yeah. Kay. So you, under this law, it is illegal to destroy a nest, an active nest. 
So you cannot kill an individual eggs or nestlings. Nestlings are the little baby, uh, mm -hmm. baby birds. Yeah. So that means you can't cut a tree, you can't cut a hedge, you can't cut a woodlot in the middle of uh, the breeding season. So that's spring and summer, right? Right. But uh, do many municipalities or does the city itself uh, uh, respect this? Not so much. Really? No, unfortunately. Uh, two years ago, approximately, Montreal got fined heavily for cutting down uh, buckthorn. Buckthorn is a very invasive species from Europe, and uh, so Quebec is on a, a mission to, to take it away, which is a very good thing. Um, invasive species means that it's competing with, nat with, uh, with natural species, with mm -hmm. native species. And, um, but the time was not right. They did it right in the smack of the breeding season. So, you know, it, it, it's that's where uh, there are limitations. You really need to look at everything together. You need to protect the wildlife. Uh, you need to make sure you're complying to federal laws that are there to protect our environment. Um, and uh, so that I think that's where Montreal needs to go in the future. And I think I think it is heading there. You know, and I think it's that's thanks to uh, organizations so, such as Sauvons la Salome and mm -hmm. Sauvons la Falaise and Te Techno Parc Oiseau. These people are my heroes. You know, they have shed light on that very much. Um, a little bit of the hypocrisy mm -hmm. uh, that, oh, we're, we're doing all these wonderful things by creating bike paths, and which again is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're, we're improving our waste management, but then whoops, we're gonna like develop on all of the last remaining wetlands in Montreal. We're mm. gonna destroy the last green spaces. So you know, they, everything goes together. It's a fine balance. It's a very fine balance. So we are now, as you know, there's 15,000 scientists signed from 184 countries signed a letter recently saying that humanity was at a point, it was in crisis. Mm -hmm. We're at a point where we need to change our ways, otherwise we're not going to have humans, let alone other species, let alone warblers or shorebirds or anything like that. Humans are not going to be here anymore. Um, so there's a wonderful report that was published in 2016, the Living Planet Report. This is World Wildlife Fund. And they looked at the state of affairs for globally. Over 14,000 uh, species that they looked at, uh, they reported that there was a 58% population decline. Wow. Yeah, it's staggering. That's shocking. It's shocking. It, uh, it hit the newsstands, people were freaking out about it, and now I think people have just said, they just, Five second attention go. span. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think it stems from that, you know, that letter. It's not only that, we also have climate change that is a big, big issue. Um, but coming back to the Living Planet Report, uh, the number one um, contributor to the loss of, of species, so we have a great loss in biodiversity globally, and the major contributor is habitat loss and degradation. That is the number one. Okay. It is the most common across the board. Uh, wetlands have suffered tremendously. More than 80% of wetlands have disappeared globally. Wow. Yeah, and so we still are talking about developing on wetlands here. I mean, that's, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, and um, the, the true, uh, this holds true for Canada as well. So World Wildlife Fund also did a report for Canada. Same thing, uh, most populations have declined precipitously. And at the rate that we're going, the, uh, the rate of decline is going to increase. That's what they predict. So we're going to lose even more species in the years to come a lot quicker. We're going to see species extinction, et cetera. Um, I had the pleasure to work on, uh, on a, a project uh, to co-dissected co mm -hmm. uh, the state of Canada's birds for the Auditor General in 2013. Um, this is a report that was written by the North American uh, Bird Conservation Initiative, NACB, mm -hmm. and they too. So for many birds, uh, it's sometimes a 90% decline in population since 1970. So all these reports go back to 1970. 1970 to 2012 is the period that we look at, and there's a major decline across the board. And again, habitat loss, major con contributor. Uh, and the other contributors, of course, like I said, is climate change, which also affects healthy ecosystems and can contribute to habitat loss. Um, we have pollution, of course, the, um, uh, the bees that are, are disappearing. Right. Um, you know, the primary reason is agricultural pesticides. There are other reasons as well, uh, but I think scientists are coming together and saying yeah. that that's the, the major reason. So where do we find uh, hope 
and all of this craziness, and how do we keep it in the public attention? The old saying of, of think globally, act locally, it's really true. Uh, you know, I, I, think, uh, I think there is hope because people are waking up and with statistics like that, there's, there's no other Slowly. choice. I hope so. I really hope so. <laughs> yeah. With uh, 15,000 scientists uh, writing letters saying, hey, everybody wake up, um, you know, there's a momentum there. And it's kind of like slowly dislodging itself from the brick wall that, that we were kind of in, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I think there's hope and people can do a lot uh, locally, you know, you, you can uh, get involved with you, your municipality, you can ensure that your municipality has a, a sound uh, sustainability plan, a, a good a climate action plan. Mm -hmm. A lot of it will depend on what Montreal is doing, if we're just talking about Montreal. Um, but then you can do things that are very simple, you know, you could be a conscientious consumer, you can buy locally, there's so many wonderful farmers in Quebec and Montreal mm -hmm. that are producing uh, sustainable meats and vegetables. Um, you can, uh, just in your own garden, uh, don't use pesticides. Uh, very simple things, compost, uh, uh, make sure you're, you're creating a, a nice habitat for birds and animals. And there's a lot of organizations that can teach you how to have a friendly garden, a friendly environment. Um, and if you see things that don't look right, like uh, an entire woodlot being cut down <laughs> in the middle of summer, you have to say something. Right. They, um, unfortunately, the capacity for um, you know, Canadian Wildlife Service agents uh, to go around and make sure that everything is okay is just not there. There's right. just not that many people to, to enforce the laws, unfortunately. And what happens is that um, protection of our environment falls on the shoulders of citizens, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Right, and we have to put the pressure on the politicians because yes. they're getting a lot of money and pressure from these big corporations and lobbyists and the only other alternative can be ground up community pressure. That's right. To say you represent us, not these corporations. It's time you take responsibility for that. That's right, absolutely. And corporations have their, their role to play too. They can have a huge impact on uh, minimizing their environmental footprint right. and, their, and increasing their social engagement. Mm -hmm. You have amazing um, uh, examples of companies that are doing that. They're just, uh, um, they're doing everything they can to, to reduce their, uh, their environmental uh, footprint. Dr. Isabel Anne Bisson, thank you so very much. For anyone who wants to get more information, you can look at the Sierra Club Quebec chapter online. And we just thank you so much for all the work that you're doing in protecting Montreal, Quebec, and Canada, and all of our environmental spaces. So thank you again. And a quick thank you to Live Art for letting us film here today. Thanks. Thank you, Justin.